Hey you guys, how are we? I hope you are thriving. I've got for you today potentially my most requested video and it's just a video that I'm super excited to film and talk about and that is my running journey because oh my god it has been a wild ride. I feel like the main part of the journey has been over the last year, like 12 months, but I'm gonna like recap my history and fitness just so you've got a bit of background but if you followed me or know me in any capacity even in the last year you'll know what a wild ride I've been on with running. Like I this time last year, July 2022, I couldn't run 2k non-stop. My first attempt at a 5k, so like running, walking, was 40 minutes. I hated it, but I was so determined. But anyway, I have since then run multiple half marathons. I ran the London Marathon in April and I ran the Hackney Half in May, I think it was. And I am now training for the Lisbon Marathon. So we've come a long, long way. And my 5k PB now is under 25 minutes, which is just insane. So I'm basically gonna talk you through my entire journey with running, because I get asked this all the time. And I have made it like a little mission of mine to inspire as many girls as I can to get running and girls who also believe that they can't run and are too big to run, are too unfit to run, etc, etc. I just hate running. I'm trying to get them running because it's genuinely changed my life as a very anxious um, person who has struggled with her mental health a lot. It's the best thing I've done for my mental health and it also helped me transform physically and I just, I just love running. It's so annoying but I now run run clubs and I coach girls to run but I'm going to tell you my journey. Anyway, I was not a sporty gal growing up. Like I was not the girl who did athletics, I was not the girl who did swimming or played any sports competitively I just it wasn't me I danced I did like street and all that stuff so I had like a kind of level of fitness I wasn't an unfit child I just wasn't like a super sporty kid on sports day you would not catch me running I did not like run at all basically and I remember in like I think it was like year 10 or year 11 in the UK so how old are you then like 15 maybe I me and my friends at the time signed up to a race for life 10k and I was like I don't know, I was quite young, like I didn't really train for it. I think I went for a couple of runs around my block, but I had no real concept of what 10K was. We were doing it for charity, it was kind of something that you just did. There was no pressure on it. And I think we did 10K in like an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes, because we walked some, we ran some. And I remember finding it really, really hard. And I was surrounded by girls who were naturally much more athletically built than I was and just sportier. And they found it a lot easier. And that's fine. It didn't really bother me at the time. But then with hindsight, I think things like that are the start of where my relationship with food and my body image started to go downhill. But we're not gonna dive super into that on this video. That'll be a whole other video. But that was kind of like my intro to running. And then come, I'm gonna say year 11, so I was about 16, um, my friend Chloe was like, do you wanna come to Park Run? And I was like, okay, keen. So we know I love Park Run now. 5K, they're all over the world Park Runs as well. They're completely free. It's just a 5K in your local park. like love them because her dad did it every weekend and I was like okay sure I'll come along did and when I went one Saturday met up with Chloe and her dad and we did park run and I remember I looked it up recently on my park run profile because you get a chip time and it was like 37 minutes absolutely fine time like considering I didn't run like that was absolutely fine obviously you're a kid so you can send it a little bit more well a kid I still feel like 16 is kind of kid vibes anyway that was like decent, right? Um, again, never did it consistently. My mum also did a couple of like 5Ks. I remember, I don't know what they were. She did a couple of 5Ks, like sponsored runs, like charity runs in Hyde Park. And I remember once Paula Radcliffe went and I remember thinking I was so cool because like there was a little motorbike and like he was filming everyone and I thought I was so cool because I got on TV. But again, 5K in around 35, 40 minutes, doing it for charity, like maybe once a year. Very, very low key vibes all of sixth form so year 12 and year 13 up until i was 18 didn't run didn't do any sports like i think i played a bit of netball in sixth form but i always was goalkeep because i'm tall and i just didn't want to run anywhere because i hated running and just felt so incapable i just never was like a fitnessy person sports day again i'd be netball i'd be goalkeep and i just liked to I just liked sports day because you got to dress up as a cheerleader and that was just big main character energy for me apparently and I just loved that aspect of it but not the actual sports side. So the moral of this entire story is that I grew up not running. I have not got that running base. So many people now and the main thing to, main point I want to get across in this video is you can't compare yourself to anyone. So like I'm telling you this journey, do not compare yours to mine. You do you, we all start somewhere but like there are so many people now, especially now running is becoming such a big thing, especially in social media. People will say they've never run before and then they'll dive straight in with a 25 minute 5k. 
just keep in mind that some people have grown up sportier than others, some people have different bills and just genetically maybe better. I don't know what it is. Like there's, you just can't compare it. There are too many influencing factors, the way that they are built, the way that like anything they've done growing up, like there's just too many factors. So you can't compare it. But I did grow up doing sweet fuck all sport wise. And that's okay. I had a good time. It's all right. Um, then we come to my gap year again. Did no running, obviously. I was just working at Waitrose and then traveling. So big vibes from me. Let's go to uni. I'm just literally doing it chronological order in my head. Uni, I joined the uni netball team again, played goalkeeper, so no running for me. <clears throat> Pretty sure I did like no running in first year at all. And then, yeah, I did no running. I literally just didn't run. Anyway, second year, I started to do some runs with some of my friends who I like was on a lot of water sports societies at uni, which is a bit rogue, but I a lot of them were into running. So I remember trying to do like a couple of 5Ks with them. Again, I just couldn't do it. Like I, I don't know where this pressure comes from to just go straight straight in with a 5K because that's half an hour of running at least, if not 40 minutes, if you're a beginner or if you're just, that just can be 40 minutes. And I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't keep up with them. They were all like 25 minutes, at least 30 minutes and I just couldn't do it. And I remember this is like when my hatred for running started to kind of come out because I was just like, oh my God, I absolutely just can't run. Like. I can't keep up with these people. I was also struggling quite a lot with my relationship with food at this point. I'd been very underweight for the first year summer and then coming back into second year, I was putting on a lot of weight. So things were just getting harder for me because I was also going unhealthy the other way. Um, I wasn't looking after myself. I was training quite hard in the gym. I remember I would just go on the stepper. So I had some kind of like cardio fitness there, but I just couldn't run, didn't like it. And then right in the winter so i think it was around like november december of second year when i was 21 i um started trying to run a little bit more seriously with my friend tilly um and we would do five we would do 5k twice a week and this is when like i kind of started to see how people loved it but also still very much low-key hated it because I just still couldn't do it and I was still comparing myself to everybody else doing these super 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 fast like splits that I could just never even dream of doing and so me and Tilly would do a 5k after the gym on a Monday and I think at this point it was taking me like 35 minutes and I was chasing this 30 minute number in my head and I still do it now and I think there's still so much pressure out there to one run 5k off the bat and two run a 30 minute 5k that's like bog like like the standard and I don't get why I don't know where that's come from I, don't, I also don't know if that's low-key in my head that I'm just putting that pressure on myself because I'm quite guilty of doing that but I do think there's like unspoken thing where a 30 minute 5k is like the holy grail I don't know and I beat myself up a lot about it but I couldn't do it um so I would do that and then we would do parkrun Southampton Common parkrun on a Saturday morning and we'd go get brunch and that's when my love for parkrun and brunch Sparked. So we got, I'm going to say we got like two or three weeks of doing that consistently and then Tilly went to Australia on her semester abroad and I stopped running, <laughs> which was far from ideal. Again, I'm going to say I did a couple more, maybe a couple more like park runs, but like nothing major. Then again, didn't run all of that summer. This is when I was really struggling with my weight. Came back in third year, Tilly was back from Australia. And we started doing, I'm going to say, like, again, it wasn't until winter time because I would work in the pub quite a lot and it meant I couldn't run on a Saturday morning or I was just finding excuses not to run because I hated it and felt like I couldn't do it. I was never going to get that 30 minute 5k and I was just annoying myself. Again, never running more than 5k, never doing anything other than just going out for a run and just kind of hating it and finding it really disgustingly hard. Um, started doing park runs again, dabbled in park run and brunch. It was like the thing that got us through third year dissertation writing. Lockdown happened in March 2020 and I, like everybody else, came home, was massively thrown off their schedule and just used my special hour a day of allowed to leave the house time to run 5k. Thing here, there was no one there to keep me accountable and this is so toxic for me, but I remember when everyone was doing like the NHS 5 for 5, 5 for 5k, whatever, 5 pound for 5k, I don't know. I was so nervous and felt so much pressure to post my Strava on my Instagram when I shared that I'd done the run that I would like run for like 500 meters and then pause my watch and then catch my breath and then run because I was so, I felt so embarrassed I couldn't run a, a 30 minute 5k which with hindsight is just so bizarre. Like I was donating for charity, it was something to do, we were literally in the middle of a global pandemic, why was I stressing about that? So weird but I did that. 
and it was toxic and I fed into the culture that you have to run a 30 minute 5k and like I lied so that's shit from me and I'm sorry for whoever believed it but I couldn't run a 30 minute 5k at this point I was pausing it on my way around running around my blocks in lockdown and I think I did a couple of 5k's I remember at this point I did an 8k with my brother and I thought it was the absolute coolest thing I'd ever done again stop start was probably like closer to a seven minute pace fine lovely go me 8k absolutely huge just did it more as something to do you know when you're just immensely bored in lockdown and we were like hmm apparently like the rest of the UK we are now professional runners so let's try and run 8k and we did that again then I stopped running for ages and then we came out of lockdown and things went wild and I just kind of stopped running. And then ever since then I like dabbled in, dabbled in a 5K, never ever hit that 30 minute. I think I got very close. I got like 30 minutes, 30 seconds, but I was like on the floor dead. Like I found it so, so, so hard, so hard. Um, and I just never did it consistently. I never trained for longer than like a month in a, in a row before giving up and then just being really nasty to myself about the fact that I just couldn't run. And I was too fat to run and I'd never be able to run. I used to always use the excuse that I was like just not built for running. Like I was just too big boned, which is, is just bullshit realistically. Like some people are for sure genetically built to run more efficiently or more favoured genetically to run. Do you know what I mean? But... And also it doesn't matter what pace you're going at, like just getting out the door is the most impressive thing. So I wish I'd stuck at it sooner. And that's what I'm trying to help girls do now. But let's skip ahead because I just dabbled for the next few years until <clears throat> December 2021. And I had a massive like kind of life crisis. And I was like, I hate my office job. I knew I was going traveling in the April. I knew I was unhappy in my body. And I was like, I just need to like uproot, uproot my life. I just need to make, something needs to change. And so I booked a half marathon. I started training to be a PT and I quit my job ready to go traveling. And so from January until April, I worked my notice at work and like worked for the last four months because I like just agreed to work four months. Um, trained for a half marathon, qualified as a PT. And in that training for a half marathon, I was doing three runs a week. My friend from that job wrote me a plan because he was like a sub three hour marathon runner, like he's amazing. Um, and so I would run three times a week. The longest run I did, it was actually mad. And I was doing this pretty much on my own as well. I would do a 5K a week. I wasn't doing any like interval sessions. I had no idea about speed sessions. I had no idea about like paces really. I was every single one of these runs, I was just going out for a run. Um, I was quite often doing 8Ks. I think the longest run I did, I did like a 10K, a 12K and a 16K before this half. Um, and then it was the, it was like two weeks before this half marathon that I finally, finally got my first sub 35K. And that was the last time I got it for a very long time. I ran that half marathon, ran, I ran and walked that half marathon in two and a half hours. And I was, beyond like ecstatic to have crossed that finish line and to be able to run a half marathon like that was a huge point for me in terms of switching my mindset to I can run which didn't last long but we had a brief little tease of what I was capable of and then like I think it was like two weeks after that half marathon Tilly and I left for traveling where we went for basically three months and did not a single piece of exercise and I put on a lot of weight and I came back in July 2022, so a year ago. This is when it all really starts to like. This is I. This is what I classify as my running journey from for the last 12 months because everything before that was like. Yes, the half marathon was absolutely amazing. So super proud of myself, but like, it didn't feel like I was really committing to it. It was more like a. I don't know. It was I wasn't committing to my running journey. It was more me proving to myself that I could do something for myself, which I do think massively influenced my mindset here now but I wish I'd like invested in myself a little bit more and like properly committed to the journey sooner but that's fine because we've made it now so we come back in July 2022 and I am uh, I don't know how to put this not in a good place particularly like I basically didn't want to get a job straight away because I still have money left from traveling so I was just kind of like dossing about a little bit started to brainstorm and like plan to start the re-club and I like had this vision of what I wanted it to be which I'm going to do a whole video on the re-club but that was kind of like inspiring me to get back into my own fitness journey because I felt like a massive imposter trying to start a business in that industry when I wasn't confident and happy and or healthy in my body and the way that I was living so I was like right 
let's try and start going running again. So then in August, I went for my first run um, and I just went for a lap around my block, which is like 1.2K. And I did it in like almost a seven minute pace and I was like sweating, wheezing. I do have asthma, but like wheezing and was like, fuck, like I've lost all of it. But where I was so determined after how shocking I felt like in that job before that I wanted to like start the rehab and like I knew what I wanted to do it was like really pushing me to like you've got to stick out of this you've got to stick out of this what would you say to one of your clients if you had them now like what would you do um and so I kind of just like built it up very very slowly and this is why I always like to say to my clients now like if you're totally new to running or you're totally like your confidence has been knocked just get out and go for a run and see how far you can go don't like sign up for a 5k and set yourself up to fail don't go out with the expectation of running a certain pace and like setting yourself up to fail go out for a run it doesn't matter what you've done before if you used to be a pro runner if you're looking to start running get your shoes on invest in some good running trainers and another thing i did the whole time before like even like october last year i had shit trainers didn't have running gear had shorts that rode up had uncomfortable sports bras didn't have the kit which does massively influence how you can train how good you and how like capable you feel training so i would say invest that. i have a whole video on my running essentials so go and check that out now but i wish again i got better trainers sooner anyway if you're looking to start running get out no pace expectations no distance expectations go for a run stop when you start when you're like out push yourself don't just stop when it gets hard because that's not how it works but like stop when you are when you're tapped out when that's enough for you and that's like you push yourself you challenge yourself that's your baseline and then that's it that's literally it that's your baseline if you've got a coach tell them your baseline we'll build from that and then i just think it's about not every single run once you get into a training plan is going faster and further but like when you're really starting out it is about just trying to push on that one percent where you can whether that's something feeling one percent easier you go for a hundred meters further or can you go for 10 seconds longer when you're just starting out i think it's important to build like that um so i'd say try and get to maybe like 3k from doing that at a pace that you're comfortable and confident in then invest in a plan once or even like two and a half k like once you're confidently running for like 10 15 minutes invest in a plan we all know I love runner. I'm using runner right now to train for the Lisbon Marathon. They have a 5k plan and there is of course the NHS couch to 5k which I think is a fab fab option if you are completely starting out. So so good. Massively rate it. Um, I also do offer running coaching if you needed like an actual hand and you wanted a one to one coach then just let me know. Send me a DM. But I do think if, especially if you're really committed to getting stuck in and you know that you failed in the past or like not failed you've like given up in the past and this time you're really committed to sticking to it invest in yourself invest in the process it doesn't have to be long term but I think sometimes you need the accountability and the support there to get you <clears throat> at least what you want to be and build that routine so it's solid so that you can then go on and like do it on your own um so I anyway got very sidetracked I was running I built it up till I got to like 3k and that's when I decided I was going to start my fat loss journey. And um, so I started losing a bit of weight. And I think I took like the, my foot off the pedal with running a bit. Um, from like September to October. Because I was really investing in starting up the reclub. And it just took a back seat. I'm very much like my brain can get very overwhelmed. And where running was still so hard for me. And I was feeling so incapable. And like I, I like was dreading my runs. I just that just I just dropped it. Which I just did. That's just the. It. and then i was almost ready to launch the re club in october and i signed up for the london marathon because i was like right i'm such a kind of person that i need to book something in to push myself like if i hadn't booked that half marathon the year the earlier in the year i just wouldn't have pushed myself on my running journey so i was like right i'm gonna book the london marathon if i get it it's a sign and i like literally made it foolproof that i was gonna get it because i signed up on a charity place and i found out a week after i turned 25 that i got the london marathon place for the April and I remember being like okay you signed up to this now you've got it now you actually have to run and it was like a proper like okay like I was so scared but I had so much time that I was like cool yeah let's go let's go and I have a couple of like screenshots of my park run um like the old, the old results and like my my park runs from October last year are like 36 37 minutes i had a couple that were like over 40 when i had to walk for a bit really struggling really like 
am I even going to be able to run this marathon? Like, I don't know. And I started to build up a little bit. I wanted to get back up to 10k distance before um, Christmas. So I built up, I did a couple of like six, seven, eight K again. My friend was like, I had a friend who was a really good runner and he was just giving me advice on like how to build it and stuff. And like where I was a PT now, I was just, I was doing my own research as well. Like I was just like, like reading around, watching other people on like YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, figuring out how I could build it. And I built it up to 10 K and then December came around and I got boozy, I got busy and I went on holiday and I didn't run for like a month and I'd booked myself a half marathon <laughs> for January I'd booked the Battersea Park half marathon in January as a like kickstart it you've run a half marathon before you might not be able to run it all but like go find your baseline see where you're at push yourself to do a half marathon you know that you've done it before if you need to walk it you need to walk it but it was like I just well, I'm sometimes thrive in being thrown in at the deep end that's how I work other people might not be I needed to be thrown like chuck me straight in so it was like two weeks out i think it was like mid january i'd done a couple of runs post um new year's i think i got up to like 12k um maybe even 14 don't remember now um i built it up until the half marathon and i was like oh my god i'm gonna die and i remember there was a train strike on the day so like none of my friends ended up being able to come and support which was absolutely fine because it was just one of the low-key ones in Battersea. it wasn't like a massive massive race thing and i went and i was really massively proud of my time i think i ran it in like just over a six minute pace which was just insane but i'm also the kind of person who just like thrives on an atmosphere of an event <laughs> get so carried away if people are cheering me on i'm like yes so i did that and i was like oh my god i can actually run this and i do think i listened to this podcast the other day and it was saying how and i've caught myself a lot i think i've said this in another video about with confidence you can't fake confidence you can't fake it till you make it you have to do the tiny things every single day to build up your confidence and prove to yourself build a stack of undeniable proof that you are capable of doing something and that's how you build confidence but though that stack of undeniable proof can just come from like doing little things like it can be like running like this much more like you're just proving to yourself that you can do a little bit more and then you suddenly get the confidence to not suddenly you build the confidence to do the bigger things and like it happens it builds quickly and it builds without you really noticing it but I just, me doing those 10Ks, like pushing for a 12K and like maybe pushing for a speedier 5K was me building that confidence to be able to do that half marathon and then building that half marathon built me with the confidence that I was capable of doing those longer runs and doing the London Marathon and like slowly, slowly but surely you just build that confidence and the confidence I've built through doing like longer runs, like doing endurance running has transferred into the rest of my life and like the way I approach things is like massively changed with how my approach to running longer distances and running faster paces has changed. I don't know if that makes any sense. But my mindset was massively shifting at this point. I was super proud of that half marathon and I then dived straight in to a 16 week training plan which my friend from my old work wrote for me. So I wasn't using runner at this point. I kind of wish I did because I think again for the whole of London marathon training I barely did any speed work. Like I did no real like pacing or anything like that. But for the London Marathon, I was running four times a week. I consistently hit that, I think. I actually did, like I actually ran four times a week. I was so committed to it. I had like lost a lot of weight in that fat loss journey from like September to December. Like I'd lost over like 12 kg. I was feeling really confident. I was just like, there was a big life shift for me that came with starting my running journey. And I do think it's linked. I do think that that's a lot of it does come down to running, but um, I was just in a much better place. I was feeling so much more confident. I was just like, well, the reclub was fully built. Like I launched the reclub in November, had like built my confidence with that. Things were going really, really well. And I was just so determined to prove to myself that I could run the London Marathon. Cause that was one thing that I always felt was beyond my control. Because when I said, when I used to believe that I couldn't run, it'd always be like, oh, I'm not built like it. I'm not, like it was always like things that I, pretended I couldn't control and I just was in this era of like pushing myself out of my comfort zone doing loads of things that scared me running a marathon and like proving to myself I'm so capable of absolutely anything which sounds really annoying but like that was my mission to like prove to myself that I could do it so I was like right if I'm gonna run, run the London Marathon I'm gonna give it my fucking all and at this point I was kept saying to my friends like I'm only ever gonna run, run one marathon I was like oh one marathon's enough for me once I've done that I'm done here she is training for Lisbon um but 
I like went to my first pure sport. I actually started TikTok in this time, like started documenting my journey just because I was like, oh, this is fun. Like kind of want to share it. I was trying to build my confidence with content because I knew that's what I wanted to like pursue long term. But I was scared and like I kind of got to hide behind the reclub a bit, which was good for my confidence when I built that up to do it as like just me. Um, was running four times a week, was doing a long run, a speed, like a tempo 5k and then like a middle distance run and then a recovery run but they were all very like merged into one in terms of pace like this I this is at this time my 5k was improving massively so I'd say from like mid January to mid March like a month before the marathon I was pushing on those 5k's like I was going to park run I was going to pure sport I was pushing for speed on my 5k's and I've managed to get my time down to 24 something which is insane from the girl who was running 40 minute 5Ks, like I still cannot believe that I ran a 5K and you could see a four minute on the pace. And like, I don't think I will ever, ever get used to that. I think that's fucking huge. I'm so proud of myself. And even when I was doing, I did a speed run yesterday and I ran at like a four minute pace on my intervals. And I was like, no, not me, could never be me. Shocking, but it is me and we're doing it and you can do it too. But I get so sidetracked. I, yeah, was running four times a week. The long runs, I'm so fortunate. I, there was a girl called Molly and I love her. I'm actually running with her on Saturday. Is it tomorrow? Oh, it's Thursday today. Running with her on Saturday. And I would run my long runs pretty much exclusively with her because we were both a very similar pace. If anything, she was a tiny bit quicker than me and it really helped to push me. But obviously, your long runs for marathon training, like you're going at a super easy pace. You're mainly focusing on like endurance um and like getting those kilometers in so we would just go and chat and always get a coffee and brunch after which was just lovely and it got me through and like my sunday long runs i look back with such fond memories for the whole of like the beginning of 2023 i look back with the fondest memories like of our sundays because we would like go to different places around london we planned different routes and we'd just go and get our long runs done together and it was just really wholesome vibes and that's partly why i've started the re club run clubs now um what do we do then? Yeah, so I was training every week. I'd say like I had a deload every four to five weeks. I would have like a shorter long run. But aside from those, every week my long runs were increasing by 2k. And the longest run I did before the London Marathon was 32k. No, it wasn't. It was 35k. Everyone told me I should only do 32. Everyone was like, Rihanna, no one does more than 32. But on, on marathon training, like just do 32k. But I couldn't go into the London Marathon knowing that I had to run 10k more than I'd ever run before. I just mentally couldn't do it. I like with that whole like building proof that I building that stack of proof that I could I was capable. I needed to run 5k to know that I only had seven left because I thought cool two and then you've just got a park run, which is a silly mindset. But that's just how I like to split up my runs. Like how many park runs have I got left? How many laps have I got left? I like to break my runs down into sections because that's what gets me through. So that's my running journey up to the London Marathon. Ended up running the I did a um half marathon actually a month before. The London Marathon and my aim was to run that as hard as I could before I started to taper <clears throat> before the 35k and before I started to taper and really suss what was a realistic race pace for me and I also had never got a sub two hour half marathon before and I was so determined to do that and I did that I booked the Victoria Park half marathon and I ran a sub two hour half marathon and I was just shook to my core and I did it solo. I went, I went to this race, I didn't know anybody there. I met the loveliest girls who'd been watching my TikToks and I made friends with them and I was like, oh my God, I love making friends through running. And I did it. I ran with my headphones in, I did it all completely by myself and that was like a massive proof to myself moment as well. I was like, you can fucking do this. You are so unbelievably capable, so capable. And it doesn't happen overnight if you think about it. Like I was running consistently now for like months. Like it doesn't just happen. Like all those times I gave up after a month, I barely even scratched the surface. Like. I'm now how many months in like it's July and I'm still making strides and like it's not even a linear journey like I've taken time off anyway I'm getting ahead of myself we'll circle back we're gonna put that on the shelf we're coming back so round the London Marathon best thing I've ever done in my life for my mental health for my physical health for my relationships for my lifestyle best thing I've ever done ever 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 ran it in four hours 25 which i'm still so 
obsessed with to be honest with you because I genuinely took it easy it was raining and I just said to myself like you're going to enjoy it I didn't look at my phone once my phone did not leave my pocket the entire time I wasn't looking at my pace I didn't care about my pace because I knew that the main thing about the London Marathon was the training and the effort that I put into the training like that's what it's all about yes the day is amazing but I do think the biggest lessons are, like everything that you learn and prove to yourself comes from the training the race was amazing though so it had the best day obviously London Marathon atmosphere is just unreal um i did do a london marathon debrief and a vlog of that week so like that's on my channel go have a look and obviously there's loads of there's fucking loads of tiktoks of my actual training for london marathon but best thing i've ever done ran it in four hours 25 which was just insane to me considering i ran that half marathon almost exactly a year before that in two and a half and died do you know what i mean and like i finished the london marathon smile on my face not to be like annoying but could have actually carried on i hadn't like killed myself off because everyone always told me like for your first marathon you've just got to enjoy it. and with how hard i worked and for all of the lifestyle changes i'd had that was like the like it was like a real like moment of it all coming together so i just wanted to make sure i really enjoyed that day and i had the best time so proud of myself and i was like i went out that night with my friends like i was out i was on my feet like i hadn't killed myself off the training had paid off it was so so good and then i had like a week of recovery um and then i started training for the hackney half which was bold of me to be honest but i was just in such the running mindset i was like felt like i was properly in with the community i was having such a good time making running content and i was like yeah let's go i'm gonna i'm gonna run the hackney half ran and i was trying my aim my only aim for the hackney half was to get a pb because i thought i'm so fit physically fit right now i've just run the london marathon i'm recovered i've got a few weeks to train i think i had like two or three weeks to train i was like you're so physically fit send it give it your all like who knows what you can achieve went to hackney it was a really hot day as well which was a bit risky again i've got a hackney half debrief video on my channel um and i ran it and i got a pb and i ran the hackney half at like a 5 30 pace which is just wild like that's so fast to me i know for a lot of people again you can't compare like i know for a lot of people that that is their easy pace and like a standard pace and what people go into but for me that was such a huge thing i actually get a bit emotional thinking about how far i've come with running because of how much i used to hate myself and how much i used to believe that i just couldn't run so now running like races like that and the outfits i'm running races like that in like for hackney I just as like a fucking tangerine and like was just running around with this massive smile on my face like it just feels like a massive deal like i'm i am feeling a bit emotional bear with me <laughs> um so yeah ran hackney half so proud of myself and i actually did that with no one there to support me which sounds really woe is me but it's not i just was like i love doing stuff for myself i always find it the most rewarding you can tell i'm uncomfortable because i'm touching my hair so much um just like super emotional to do stuff like that for myself and like i always feel really really proud of it um so did the hackney half and then i was just kind of chilling after the hackney half for a few weeks like I knew I was starting Lisbon marathon training um, in like the few weeks after, but I was kind of just chilling, like just like trying to run for fun. Did a couple of like 5K PBs, got a 10K PB and ran a 10K at a 5.15 pace two weeks after Hackney. Was just like going for PBs, was just going for fun, like proving to myself that I was so super capable. And then um, Hot Girl Summer arrived. We are currently in the era of me doing the absolute most and not particularly prioritizing running because i'm so early on into marathon training that and i know that i'm capable that i'm also just like living my life and not taking it that seriously yet so i started lisbon marathon training a week early because i started training did like a quite a low-key week did like a 10k like for me like quite low-key at this point in terms of mileage compared to what i had been doing did like a 5k been doing my run clubs and stuff like running quite socially but started unofficially like lisbon marathon training um then i went to mykonos for a week drank all the rose fucked my recovery fucked my sleep tried to run when i was back obviously found it horrendously hard was back for 10 days and then i went to marbella drank all of the rose <laughs> just fucked my recovery didn't sleep had the best time made loads of memories <laughs> no regrets at all came back with what i think was well it was some kind of flu who knows what it's i'm not gonna i'm also not gonna get a little banner on my video but i was unwell um still unwell 
two weeks on. So my body is fighting something and I tried to run. I tried to run and I've like, when I came back from Marbs, it was like, right, marathon training, we're going now. Cause I've got like just over 12 weeks. I think I had like 13 or 14 weeks. Can't work out the math right now. I've got time. I'm not stressed yet. Um, start, time to start like not drinking as much, but like not time to like, like go like recluse. Like I did at the end of the London marathon. Like just time to sort my life out a little bit. Um, so I tried to run 11K with this flu that I had died tried to run my speed session couldn't do it had a half marathon planned absolutely could not do it so the first week back was a massive fail but this week i've run easy 12k i've done 10k intervals and i ran 5k this morning and i'm feeling not my best but i'm feeling back and i'm feeling so super excited to see what i can do with this marathon training because it's time to get properly stuck in I've got the Lisbon Marathon in October, October 8th. I'm thinking of booking a couple of like half marathons in between to see if I can get a PB. I would love, current goals are, I would love to get a 24 minute 5K, a 50 minute 10K, in an hour and 45 half, and a sub four hour marathon. They are the goals currently i don't know if a sub four hour marathon is going to be possible in lisbon because i'm not sure how hilly it is but that maybe i'll put them here i'll put them in the description to like hold myself accountable that's what i'm currently going for which as the girl who never thought she'd run a marathon full stop whose first half marathon was two and a half hours and now she's aiming for an hour and 45 whose first 10k was an hour and 20 and she's now in 50 minutes and whose first 5k last year was 40 minutes is now aiming for 24 minutes is insane and I hope shows to you that you are so more than capable if you put your mind to it. Um, honestly, madness. But I've got Lisbon in October, I'm thinking of running the big half in September. Um, and then I potentially am running the Paris Marathon next year. She's a marathon runner now, but I also think I want to do stuff like High Rocks. Anyway, completely unrelated to my running journey. But that is how we got to where we are today. If you are new to running, like I said, couch to 5k, or runner 5k plans if you wanted to try a runner plan runner have got a 5k 10k half marathon marathon ultra marathon plans and you can use the code re for two weeks free if you just wanted to try it and see if it's for you um i also do offer coaching like i mentioned so please do just dm me but i also have the re club facebook group which is just basically if you're a girl who loves to run and brunch and want to find it want to find some girls who want to like Maybe run a 5k with you in your local area and get coffee or maybe you just want to go for a hot girl walk or you want someone to sign up to a race to, with and to do stuff like that with join the facebook group it's completely free it's good vibes we also do run we also do host running events now so like last weekend we had a 5k from Battersea to clapham and we got brunch together after and it was super super cute vibes but that is my running journey i hope i've covered any, everything if you have any questions let me know i hope that was interesting i feel like i've just rambled but yeah you absolutely can run. I don't want any more members of the I Can't Run Club. It's okay if you don't want to run. Sometimes people just don't like running. I need to get over that because I keep thinking everyone can love running. And I do believe that everyone can love running, but not everyone has to love running. If you like your cardio to be on the stepper, or you do another sport, or you like to cycle, slay, get it. I just love to run and I won't shout up about it. So hope you enjoyed my video. Next video coming for you is all about the Reclub Apparel, which is launching next week. So keep your eyes peeled and I will speak to you very, very soon.